Hey everybody, this is Marvin. Today we're going to talk about the wonderful world of onboarding. Now when it comes to onboarding, uh, I see a few common problems uh, that are prevalent in many different companies. And the number one um, problem that I always see a lot would be that they treat it as just a formality. It's just a checklist that we have to fill out. And unfortunately, this creates a really poor experience for the recruit and ultimately really bad result for the recruit and the manager who's going to be receiving the recruit. It's really not a ideal solution to find yourself in as an employee. The next thing would be that the process is rushed. Imagine this, um, joining a company for the first time, you might be skilled at your previous company, but you don't exactly know what is expected in this company. But as soon as you sit down, you've got you know, workload being thrown all over you and being dumped on your lap and say, okay, get it done, please. We know you're a superstar. Or even worse, you've never done anything like that before and it gets dumped in your lap. Call me if you need a problem. So this is something that we definitely want to avoid. The third one would be, which is the follow-up to things being rushed, is that everyone is too busy to be involved in their onboarding process. Um, even though, for example, that um, we have people designated to speak to the new recruits, to mentor them, to teach them something, last minute cancellations happen a lot. Even worse, nobody volunteers or is willing to participate in the onboarding process because they're too busy doing their daily stuff. Um, even though the time we invest in onboarding someone properly would actually give us a lot more time in the future. The fourth problem would be the inconsistency of the process, um, if we can call it a process. Um, so depending on the person administering the onboarding, depending on the department, depending on the day of the week, depending on the month, the experience of a new recruit entering a company could be very different. And that's not what creates strong culture. That's not what creates the uniformity of what it means to be us. And number five is that it's all about HR, right? The onboarding is thrown to HR, HR has to do it, and it becomes sort of their, um, uh, yeah, their busy work. You know, it's their KPI. I just got to do this so that it's done. Uh, instead of um, something that is truly meaningful for the recruit and truly useful for the company. And as a result here, what's going to happen is that, you know, you're just going to create a lot of time wasted for everyone involved in the whole process. You're going to need to continuously retrain people. You might have a lot of um, turnover because people are not getting the support and direction that they need, or the bosses feel that the employees are not where they want them to be without having properly given them a proper onboard experience. So what would an ideal situation look like? Let's look at the flip side. Uh, number one, then, you know, ideally you want something that's structured for success. You want somebody um, to know that within the next 90 days during that onboarding, uh, during the onboarding period, that I will be completely trained and prepared to handle the rigors of day-to-day -day work in my company so that I can successfully complete all my tasks and achieve all my goals. The next thing would be that an onboarding process should be very intentional. Just like in the army, they look at what are the key skills that we need. So for example, marksmanship, and they know, okay, at what level would we accept the person to be deployed in combat or in a regular regiment? Therefore, they need to know exactly what they need to train, how long they need to be training the particular cadet. And that should be the same with our employees. Yes, we don't have the luxury of maybe three months full-time military for a lot of you know fast-growing businesses, but I challenge you as well. Can you create a structure to make sure that all our recruits become combat ready at the end of the onboarding period? The third one would be ideally that developing others, not just development, is part of everyone's job description. So nobody should be too busy for being part of an onboarding process. Nobody should be too busy for developing uh, team members or colleagues to make sure that we all get to the level that we need to so that we can achieve the goals that we want to. 
The fourth one would be to make the whole experience a consistent one. Just like I said before, we want to make sure that everyone that walks into our company knows what it means to be a part of our team. They know what it means to be a part of our company. And the fifth one would be that design the experience from the recruit's perspective. How do we manage their whole emotional journey from initially agreeing to sign up with us all the way to being fully competitive, fully running and fully productive in the workplace, right? So think about their environment, think about who they need to know. So these are all the things that we need to be thinking about so that the recruit feels at home, feels energized and feels completely productive. All right. So these are the things that we can achieve if we have a really strong onboarding process. So how do we get there? I'll explain. So I've got five key principles for successful onboarding to share with you today. The first one being to start with the end in mind. Truly understand for each position, for each recruit, um, what is the expected minimum standard for them to be able to be considered productive in our team? And from there, start to break it down to see what exactly do we need to be teaching? What skills do they need to have? What tasks do they need to be able to complete? And what sort of behaviors do they need to show? What mindset they need to have? These are the components of success, if you will, that we need to, to understand. What are the different stages? And in the same vein, you want to then reverse engineer, reverse engineer success. So understand for each task, what are the key components? How do they learn how to do it step by step? How do they know how to achieve each of their critical drivers, their KPIs? You've got to be able to teach them that step by step. Who are the key people that they need to uh, have strong relationships with? We need to start building that from the beginning as well. The next thing would be to make sure that there's some sort of element of total immersion. If you think about uh, the military, once again, um, you know, they, they go to a boot camp, right? Where they live together, they stay together, they, they're completely um, extracted from the outside world. Well, the main purpose of that is to give them this sense of immersion so that they can change their identity. They can change their beliefs about themselves, about the world. They can change, change their values and realign them with those of the company. So you're going to need to think of what sort of components, um, what elements can we create in, in the onboarding process that will then allow the environment of our recruits to change as well so that their beliefs may be challenged or change for where we need it to be. Their identity for themselves can change instead of I'm just a new person to, hey, I'm part of the guys, I'm one of the team. So this is the kind of thing that we need to be thinking about during this immersion uh, consideration. The fourth one would be future pacing. A lot of new people, when they join your company, they're, they're full of questions. They're not sure what's going to happen to me. Am I going to like it here? Will I know what to do? Uh, what's going to, uh, what will my career look like? Well, if you think again, flip it back to the military, you know, um, in a lot of instances, even prior to joining the boot camp, they already meet um, senior members, people who have been in the army for a few years or in the military for a few years. They might even get to be greeted by veterans so they can see what the career uh, prospects would be like. Um, during the boot camp training experience as well, uh, they're going to meet a drill sergeant, somebody who's been around, been there, done that, knows what they're talking about. They're going to meet some instructors who are maybe third or fourth year students where so they can really um, place themselves just in a few months, this is where I would be. Um, and obviously they're going to meet commanders, they're going to meet um, generals so they can see, oh, this is a possible long-term future for me. How will that be, uh, how can you apply that in your company? And the fifth one would be the, probably the most important point is that you got to recruit right. Um, if you got, if you're recruiting based on core values, if you're recruiting based on behavior, you're pretty much in a, stand a good chance of, of molding this person the way you want them to be molded, providing they have the right basic skills. So, you know, um, one of my mentors, Keith Cunningham, he said this, and I still believe it to this day, uh, slow trigger, fast bullet. 
take your time to really, <clears throat> really find the right person. Uh, and once we find the right person, we can run together very quickly. And the other way is that we want to be, you know, higher, slow and fire fast. So really getting the right people in is going to be key for you to make sure that they respond to your training, they respond to the environment that you're creating, and they can be a productive member for your team. We did this training with our clients uh, just last week, actually, and uh, I had some worksheets for them, some tools for them to use to create their ideal onboarding experience. If you'd like a copy, just uh, drop me a note, reply to this email or um, inbox me, and uh, we'll make sure that we get you the copy straight away. Take care, everybody.